Courtney Johnson. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We're so stoked you're here. You are an expert on all things personal brand. You have your viral career cheat codes on TikTok, which we are huge fans of. So we want to get into all kinds of questions with you today. What I'd love to start with is just chatting a little bit about your journey growing your own brand and your own content. So like, take us back to when you first started with content creation. Did you have a goal behind it? Did you just start doing it for fun? Like, did you always know you were going to get to this place where you are now with a huge following? What was that journey like? Yeah, it's such a funny question because I actually started as a content creator on LinkedIn like five years ago. And I started because I was required to. My job required me to post on LinkedIn like a couple times a week because I was managing other people's personal brands. So I had to have my own. So I started posting very reluctantly. I like didn't really want to do it, but I did it anyways and started to see the results. And I was like, holy shit. Like I totally see why people dive into their personal brand and content because I was getting job opportunities. I was getting press opportunities. I was getting speaking gigs like very early into my career. And then I decided to start on TikTok in like 2020. Didn't really take off, took a break started again uh, around six months ago. So I really focused on LinkedIn and really didn't expand to TikTok till like six months ago. And it was just a fear I had. Like I had a fear of video content. Everything had been written content. So I wanted to get over that fear. And then I started posting on Instagram like maybe six weeks ago. So Instagram and TikTok are fairly new to me. LinkedIn has been my content creation game for years. And yeah, it's been great. It's just like not very saturated. And so by the time I got on LinkedIn and Instagram, I already had such a content bank built up. I could just like start using those as scripts and repurposing content and all that. Oh my God. That's, that's, that's amazing. Like, because I feel, I can, I feel that because LinkedIn has been my bread and butter for 10 years too. And I feel like it's changed so much where it's kind of becoming a little bit of like a social platform. If you think about it, more than it was, right? Yeah, well, like, overnight, I swear it's blown up. Oh my oh, god! My. Yeah, yeah, people are giving all the feels. <laughs> yeah, I've only been I've only been posting on TikTok and Instagram. Yeah, only for only for a few months. But again, it it yes, it seems like it blew up really fast, and it did. I mean, I grew super super quickly. But it was because I already had a content bank and already had my analytics that showed me when I talk about these ten topics, the audience likes it, and when I use these twenty five scripts it's going to perform well, no matter the platform. So I did start with a leg up. Mm, Yeah. And so uh, speaking of that, like, so when you say leg up, like, so do you, when you go into those other platforms, I'm always curious, but this is a, uh, this is a serious question. So do you find that you have to be more careful with your content? Like when you look back at your content that blew up on LinkedIn, do you have to kind of say, is this appropriate to post on these ones? Like, is there a different area of like comfortability you feel but I find for me personally, I'm not just aging myself and correct me if I'm wrong. I'm like, Instagram's for fun. And I'm just like, I have no idea what's going on. My cat's a superstar there. TikTok, I find this. And like, do, when you look at your content LinkedIn, do you, do you kind of think, like, how do you strategically plan where you post on each platform? Yeah, it creates like a giant feedback loop where I try to not filter myself. I know that it's easy to be like, all right, I'm going to take this piece of content and I'll put on the TikTok filter and I'll put on the LinkedIn filter and kind of change it. But I just try to stay true to my truth and like the emotion of what I'm trying to get across. And I actually I actually think truth is a massive like monetary privilege where earlier in my career, if I were to go in and create content on any platform, truly speaking my truth, truly in my emotions, I could have lost clients. You know, people might not like it. I definitely had that risk. And I think if you're like in a full time job, you do have that risk. But once I started going on my own and getting more clients and kind of building up the interest in my personal brand, I knew I could be more and more honest and more and more me. So I try not to put anything through a filter of like this for this platform, for that platform, besides the obvious of like it's video content, it's written content, whatever. But I try to just create content that's more truthful every every single iteration of the piece of content but i mean i repurpose everything everywhere a million times Mm -hmm. 
I love that point of view. I heard somebody say if you if you were sitting in a room with somebody and you wouldn't speak their truth because like your mom's in that room or somebody else is in that room, then that person has control over you. And why would you let somebody have control over you? Um, so I love your take on that. That's really it's, good. That's powerful. I've never yeah. heard that, but I'm going to I'm going to put that in my pocket. That's that's big. That's big. And I mean, I think it is the, the a lot of the times people are like, why is my content not performing well? I mean, there could be a lot of factors, but one of the biggest factors is just you're trying to put it through some lens of what you think you want people to see or you want people to hear rather than what you actually feel. Because when you're putting out something that you actually feel the emotion and the truth in, you're going to feel dumb. You're going to feel stupid. You're going to feel weird. Like that's that means you're on the right track. Yeah. I feel that. <laughs> I always get myself in trouble sometimes, but I speak my truth and I'm a very authentic. I think that's where Maddie and I clicked so well when we started Kindred because we just want the truth to come out and make people feel accepted because what you just mentioned right there is like you're if you don't speak your truth, then it's not going to be authentic and people are just going to be like, oh, swipe, right? Exactly. And I, it sounds so dramatic because I'm like, speak your truth like your truth doesn't it doesn't mean it's this big controversial thing like your truth could be something of being like I really like Taylor Swift like right okay great a lot of people are gonna be like awesome a lot of people are gonna shit on you for that that is speaking your truth or like on LinkedIn you could be like I actually prefer HubSpot over Salesforce for these reasons like that is speaking your truth what's not speaking your truth is saying every single tool is awesome and does great. Or I like every musical artist ever. Cool. Like it doesn't have to be this big thing. It's just anytime you give an opinion or share what you feel or where you're at, people, people aren't going to like it. Of course, like there's always going to be resistance, but resistance is a good sign because if everybody liked it, that would mean you are trying to please everyone with your content, which is not your truth. So true. Yeah. <laughs> LinkedIn has this reputation, I think, of being like fake. I, I think everyone thinks LinkedIn is just everyone promoting themselves and putting on an absolutely fake front. And it's like on Instagram and TikTok, maybe you can be your real self. But LinkedIn is totally blowing up right now. It's having a moment. Um, you grew on there. That was your first platform. And I know you advise people to grow their personal brands there as well. So why, why do you... Um, encourage people to use LinkedIn? Like, why do you think that's such a great platform right now for people to focus on? Yeah, I mean, it's for the exact reason you said. There's a lot of boring shit. There's a lot of like corporate-y bullshit, a lot of promotion. There's a lot of bad content. So if you can even have a single tiny iota of personality, you will stand out. Like it is the easiest platform to stand out because you're right. Everyone is being themselves on Instagram because they're comfortable. Everyone is being funny and silly on TikTok. So if you can take those qualities and put them into LinkedIn, where people are already making hiring decisions, already making buying decisions, you're going to stand out. It's just there's way more content cre content consumers. There's way more content consumers and content creators. So you're going to stand out. And there's so much boring content that if you just do something fun, you're going to stand out. And like, it's the easiest. It's the easiest platform to, it's also where the money is. Like, again, people are making monetary decisions on LinkedIn. So yeah, that's why, that's why I recommend it. It's, it's easy. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I was funny, I, I, I look back at, you know, our, when we post on LinkedIn as, as kindred, like, I don't think our stuff is fake because I'm such an advocate on it. LinkedIn. It's my job. It's my bread and butter. And Maddie is so active too, but I think what makes us different is that we're we're listening to what people are saying. We're not just following the trends of like, an, and this is no bad judgment to anybody. And I can only speak for myself when I say this. I'm, never, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's like, I was talking to my boss about it. I think when everything, everyone, LinkedIn, I, my personal opinion with LinkedIn went to a shift is because everyone is in dire shit of a hectic. Everyone's getting laid off. Everyone's dramatic right now. And I think finally people are like, oh my God, I'm so tired of like, reaching for a bait that's not real and people were so people are craving authenticity and being like yeah i could be a ceo for a company it doesn't mean i haven't been laid off this like i think there's more switch into people being like can we just be real on this platform because this is where people are right now that we're just yeah. in a weird space y'all's linkedin is really good it's really fun it brings a lot of like joy and happiness to people's feeds and you're you're doing a, a really good job so bravo on that but it's because it stands out it's because you guys have fun branding you're putting pictures of people and snippets and you're sharing stories about 
why you were inspired by a guest and all of this. And that's that's why it stands out. It's because you guys are being authentic. And again, it's not like that's taking a ton more effort from you. You're already posting that same stuff on Instagram and, and elsewhere. It's just on LinkedIn, people are like, oh, that's refreshing, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. True. Yeah. Melissa, you mentioned about how a lot of people are getting laid off right now. You're seeing it a lot. Like I'm seeing it all over my LinkedIn. People are struggling. Um, so Courtney, you do your problematic career cheat codes, and maybe that would help some of these people who are job searching. Mm -hmm. So for anyone that doesn't already follow you, can you tell them like, what are these cheat codes about? Maybe give us an example of one. Yeah. So the goal of my problematic career cheat codes is to expose the truth of what goes on in the corporate world. Like, I, I'm not I, I I got so frustrated with all of the corporate career advice. That's just niceties. It's like work hard, be nice, give updates. And it's just bullshit. Like, it's not actually what's going to help you. And throughout my career, I've just learned a ton of like, oh, OK, like that's actually what you need to do. Right. By observing other people that are not following the traditional advice. So. I have I have a lot of problematic cheat codes, but the biggest one, especially if you're someone that just got laid off, would be to lean fully into your personal brand and be dramatic about it. And I know it's going to feel a little weird, but like go hard on your LinkedIn, boost yourself up on your resume maybe lie a little bit about your last salary like that's okay maybe you know maybe that uh, uh that break that you had that career break was actually time that you're really freelancing for you know for whatever clients just you do kind of have to play the game and boost yourself up a little bit but a lot of times like it's not even problematic. It's just we don't really have confidence in our own skills and abilities. And we need that extra push to be like, oh, wait, I actually did carry that whole team. I actually did that. But yeah, if you got laid off, my recommendation would be you need to fully build out your LinkedIn profile, make yourself look like a thought leader, be really dramatic about all the work that you did and know that work that you've done that may not seem relevant is relevant. Like one time I hired this girl because she had a really good Taylor Swift fan page and i also hired someone because he had a really good um nba fan page like these are skills that and maybe for you it's like you have a farmer's market booth where you sell chocolate or maybe it you it's you have a newsletter where you talk about cinema like whatever your side thing is put that on your resume that's going to make you stand out and that's more relevant than you think it is oh hey, i'm gonna clap to that that's so true because i think it's like you you just nailed everything in the, in the comment because I you're right like I feel there's so much stress going on I think in so many different places where people get information people get overwhelmed and remember like you know little things you don't think relevant everything you do in life will lead to something that's going to be relevant to the situation you end up in right you know I look at on my first job I was 10 years old good old 90s child labor law that passed on as a reception as a car dealership for my dad. Did I think that was ever going to come out? But no, but now I can shoot the breeze with anybody. But that's the thing. I don't mention that. But someone's like, she's been working since this time. Like, you know, just like bringing up those little things you didn't think are important because there's so many like must have a bachelor's degree, must have 90 words per minute this. But it's not about that. And sometimes you forget that loyalty and integrity and showing up and those little things matter. And those little things bring that to it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I would I would also give a cheat code to people who maybe are afraid of getting laid off or you're a little nervous about the whole economic situation. You need at least one side client. You need at least one side hustle. And it's going to be overwhelming at first. You're going to be like, how this is taking way too long, whatever. Just just focus on making one dollar or ten dollars or a hundred dollars. Like, how can you use the skill that you currently have in your job and make a hundred dollars this month? Is that getting someone to get on the phone with you and pay you $100 to answer all of their questions? Is that getting a side client for your graphic design? Like whatever it may be, start very small and having a side hustle, side client, side thing, because that's going to build the muscle of always having that self-reliance where yes, even if you do get laid off, if your company fucks you over or whatever, you are going to know that you have the skills and you can like pull that trigger if you need to of like, all right, I'm always going to be able to go get a freelance client doing this or that. So that's so, so important. Hmm. Yeah, to start building it up even before anything happens. 
that, yeah. that's yeah. smart. And so you're not totally reliant on one, one, you know, one job or one company. And that it also gives you a ton of confidence, like having side hustles while I was in the full time job world just gave me this confidence of like, oh, yeah, like I can do anything. And I know how all of this works. And I've seen the behind the scenes. And, you know, it, it gives you so much confidence. I think a lot of people think that one day they're going to quit this job and this big monumental move. And it, then immediately they're going to go into doing their own thing. But a better way to do it is by starting small and starting now. That way you've already like built those skills and built those muscles. So again, if you do get laid off, if you do decide to quit, you're like, okay, I know how to build something on my own because it's not something you're good or bad at. It's just a skill. Like it's a muscle that you have to learn. Like you said, do a lot of these things, they're not actually problematic. They're just (laughs) cheat codes. Like a lot of the things that you're recommending are ways to equalize yourself with other people. Like we already know that women will only apply for jobs that they're like 100% qualified for when men will apply for jobs that they're not even remotely qualified for. Like we need these cheat codes just to equalize the playing field. Exactly. And I think where the word problematic comes up is some of the things that I say are not niceties and they're not about how the world, how we want the world to look. For example, I tell women if they feel like they're being discriminated against for being a woman, change your name or use a masculine version of your name. I I always use CJ Johnson on my resumes and not Courtney Johnson because CJ is a very gender neutral name. Now, obviously, people are like, that's problematic. I don't want to work at a place that's that's sexist, right? Well, The hiring manager maybe is not overtly sexist. Maybe it's their own unconscious bias that they have not brought to consciousness and dealt with, right? We all have unconscious biases. So it may be the culture is not, they don't hate women, but that one hiring manager or even maybe the agency that that company is hiring through, that person has an unconscious bias. Like when you're, when somebody is looking through resumes, they literally are making snap decisions that happen unconsciously. So it's, you're right. It's leveling the playing field of how can you see where maybe you'll be at a disadvantage and like game the system to level the playing field. And they're not niceties. They are a little problematic because again, it's not like what you want to hear, but it, it does work. Yeah. And so that, that's true. And I, you know, I think, a lot of times too and i don't think people know this yet but i work a lot in tech and this is not a general thing about being biased or not a lot of my resumes i'm sorry hiring for software engineers that they go through an ai system and they pick out mm-hmm. keywords and people don't notice that like a lot of times i think the 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 level of resumes that are getting through the door are because it's like okay we this is i'm only speaking from my experience when i work when i hire for very specific tech roles that i know that push everyone aside that they just need certain skills it's going through ai right so it saves a lot of time so people just you know they don't know that but that's good advice if they're applying for other places that you know you gotta be standing out right yeah definitely you should i i mean an easy trick is just to put your like give your resume to chat gpt and ask it to ats check your resume um that way you know it's filled with keywords or you can give chat gpt your resume plus the job description and ask it to match up keywords and give you a new resume. And that's that also can get around that um, those <laughs> filters. But yeah, I mean, it can it, you can get easily get lost in the shuffle. So best way to get in front of the hiring manager or the company is either find someone to give you a referral or reach out to somebody on the team directly or the hiring manager or the founder or whoever you can get in front of that extra step is going to put you far ahead of everybody else. Mm -hmm. And I would do that over a cover letter. So if you're wasting time on cover letters, just don't do a cover letter. Use that time to actually follow up with the person and like stalk them, like find some, find them on LinkedIn, find them on Instagram, find them on Twitter, wherever they're out and about. Be like, hey, I just applied to this job. Like you're going to stand out. Absolutely. So. For those of us who do want to grow their personal brands and can't get past the cringe of actually doing it, um, you mentioned earlier, like you were going, you were writing content, you felt comfortable with that, you had to get up the courage to do video. Like, where, where, 
like, what's your advice? How can people start getting past just feeling like so cringy about themselves and so self-conscious to actually just do the thing? It is so hard. Like I, I have been there. I actually, I had tried to start my TikTok several times and failed because of the cringe mountain. And I also like ended up paying someone like a few thousand dollars to build out a whole quarter of content for me. And they were really good pieces of content, really great videos. And I, I got too scared and like lost thousands of dollars because I got too scared because of the cringe mountain. Like it's so, I get it. I've been there a million times on many different platforms. But what's personally helped me is one, getting over the fear of being seen. Usually we have some sort of like deep trauma or fear around being seen. And so work through that in therapy, meditation, prayer, whatever your thing is, go into it with the intention of figuring out what that fear of being seen is. The Artist's Way is a really good book and journal um, to, to go through that. Also, what helped me, what has helped me get over the initial hump is schedule out one post a week or just make one post a week on whatever platform for like 12 weeks. That way I can schedule it out. I don't see it. And I come back to comments and niceties and, you know, some views. And it kind of gets you over that hump without you having to go like show up every day and be scared and scared and scared. It just kind of like you show up for two hours, schedule everything. And then you're like, okay, I don't have to worry about this for three months. And that's helped me very much. Oh, I love that. I do get nervous at, about like, do you not even look at the bad comments when they make the content or do you block them out? Like, I'm always just curious to see how people get over that. Oh, no, I love the mean <laughs> comment. I, <laughs> I love them. Um, So it, I do think if you're not getting. It's really help. Trolls are tools, OK? Trolls are tools and you can use them to increase the views on your content. So I will go as far to like bait them and egg them on in my own comment section if somebody's like you're an ugly bitch and I hate you and I'm like can you elaborate and they're like yeah you suck and I bet you're blah 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 and I'm like oh really like what do you mean and then the the video keeps getting more and more views so just see them as tools like you cannot take anything personally I just and honestly I tell myself that they're bots I'm like these must be bots they're like AI bots, there's somebody's running a script. Like I've totally gassed up myself into thinking that they're not real people. So that helped. And then, yeah, again, they help with my videos, which is really, really good. The only thing that hurts is like if somebody has a genuinely nice constructive comment that I'm like, oh, that hurts. But, <laughs> you know, the trolls are fine. <laughs> I love it. Wow. I love that. <laughs> yeah. That's so good. No, I, I hate, you know, it's one of those things I, very blessed in so many ways because I'm the most impulsive person too. And Maddie's my, like, we are very call each other yin and yang. So I'm like, whatever, I'll just post it and move on. Blah, blah, blah. My mind goes to like, I don't know, something totally random again. So I don't really hate, but when I sit down, like sometimes when I used to do content all the time, I'd be like, oh, that hurts my feelings. But then you're right. Like what you just said too, is that you can't, they're just, they're just, who do I care about that? You know, but it's a lot. I just wanted to sh ask that question for the listeners because I know that's something super power that I hold on to, but I always want to respect and I know a lot, it hurts a lot of people, right? And I don't, I think it's any tool we can give people, um, anybody that wants to put their content out, how you can get over that so it doesn't hurt them yeah. mentally or push push yeah. them to the top of a Mount average cringe, right? Because yeah. people mean. <laughs> people, people can be really, really mean. That, yeah. That's, yeah, it, it is difficult. I, I think having empathy is important too because, if you were in their situation and was raised in their family and grew up where they grew up with their beliefs and lived their whole life, you would do the exact same thing. Like, you know, it's it's not it, it helps to have empathy. Also, a lot of times I've turned around like mean people. Sometimes people just want to be seen like anytime I post about business or entrepreneurship, there's always people being like, you know, go back to the kitchen, bitch. You shouldn't be doing this or like. Um, you must be a sugar baby, like whatever. I'll just be like, hey, do you need any resources? Can I send you my LinkedIn course or my free LinkedIn guide to help get you a better job? And every single time I do that, they're always like so appreciative and they apologize. Kill them with kindness. Mm -hmm. Always a good strategy. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah. Something that um has been helping me a lot because as Melissa said, like we're we're opposites and I'm <laughs> really jealous of her because she's such like an action taker and she just loves being herself and getting out there. And I'm like a perfectionist and I struggle sure. with these things. Um, but I my mantra recently has been you are a contribution to the world. Like, what are you going to do? Go out there and contribute your knowledge. Like, stop being so self-centered and actually just go and help somebody. Like, like just taking the focus off of myself and thinking about how I can actually contribute knowledge. It's just like, it takes the pressure off a lot. So that's been my, my little mantra around that. I love that. And you're right. It is selfish to keep your knowledge to yourself. I do think if you feel called to create content and you have accomplished some sort of goal, it is your duty to share that with other people. It is your responsibility to share that with other people. It is your responsibility to not gatekeep. Like you're you're right because we can get to we can get in these feelings where we're like, is it selfish? I'm just talking about me, 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 whatever. Like, no, you accomplish whatever goal you accomplish, whether that's you bought your first house, you got in a great relationship, you overcame some problem, you broke into tech, whatever. You only got to that goal because you consumed other content about it. You watched that YouTube video, you read that book, you listened to that podcast, and now it's your turn to help whoever is trying to get to where you are, whoever is one step below you on the ladder. It's your responsibility to teach them. So you're, you're right. It's selfish to not do it. Oh, yeah, that's so true. I don't have a mantra I follow, but I definitely think that that is something that I really strive to do because when I was, you know, I think everyone goes through phases, but I relied on content to keep it going. How did they get there? What did they do? You know, and I followed all these influencers and I didn't think it was a big deal at first because there's so many other people in your head, like stop scrolling more this time and more that time. But that's just like for our, our lives right now. And so, yeah, I totally agree. Like you got to be the gatekeeper. Wow. Well, I- I feel like we need to get get wrapping up with this. Um, there's one question I want to ask you that we ask everybody. And so mm-hmm. so we named our show after a favorite quote of ours, which says to discover a kindred spirit oh, is to find your heart in the heart of a friend. So, Courtney, how do you know when you've found a kindred spirit? That's a great question. I would go back to what we were saying about truth. I think a kindred spirit is someone who is sure in their own truth. You know, truth is a big word that can mean a lot of things. But to me, that's somebody that's sure in their own confidence and they're stepping into their self-expression. And in stepping into their self-expression, they're giving you permission to do so as well. And so I see you guys as kindred spirits because you're here, you're sharing what you're passionate about. You're excited. You're stepping into your self-expression. And that is so beautiful. And I love that quote. I think that might be my favorite answer I've gotten so far. (laughs) Thank you. I love that. Um, I've had so much fun talking with you. It's so that these are, you know, I just wanted to say things to you. Like we love bringing people on that are as expressive as you because that's what this is all like. This is how it started. People coming on telling the their authentic truth, authentic truth, and just being able to be themselves. And we want to bring a space where everyone feels comfortable enough. And you've been great. And the insight's been great because, you know, people are struggling and we want content that's realistic and not just like a bench, bench fat, reach for the stars or something like that. Right. So you're doing a cool thing. <laughs> well, thank, thank you guys so much. It's, it's really important what you guys are doing. And, and thank you for having me on. This has been great. Wonderful. Last thing, what is what's happening in your world right now? Um, like, I know that we're going to connect everybody to your LinkedIn, your Instagram, um, everything. But like, what's happening in your world? Is there anything to share with the audience? Yeah, I'm the biggest thing is my podcast that's coming out, but it's, I don't know when it's going to come out. I would say just like for people to keep up with my newsletter, because that's where I announce all my new stuff. Absolutely. That's probably the most important. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Amazing. Thank you guys again. This was really, really lovely.